Microsoft getting hit with another antitrust lawsuit. Steam gets an official controller, but it's not a Steam controller. And AMD might have nerfed the 9700X too hard, so they gotta up it. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, June 27th, 2024. We're gonna start off today with the words that Microsoft thought they got away from back in the 90s, which was antitrust lawsuit. Turns out that, no, there's another one coming from the EU, which has been on a tear, just at levying various different investigations against these companies time after time. We talked about earlier in this week in hot news that Apple is facing some investigation with regards to the Digital Markets Act, and now Microsoft is being looked at for antitrust violations by the European Commission for bundling Office 365 and Teams together with Microsoft 365 because it unfairly shuts out rivals in the software as a service market, essentially making it so that Teams is part of the core SaaS productivity applications, which makes it difficult for other companies like Zoom and Google Meet and all those to compete with Microsoft, making it very difficult. And so this antitrust investigation will make it so that maybe Microsoft can't bundle those together anymore and they uh, won't learn their lesson because we've been here before. Just with different pieces of software, but what with these massive companies who have every single different type of facet under the sun, they're trying to combine them all together anyways, and just Microsoft, the core of their company, is still uh, true to Bill Gates, looks like. And I'm still true to my trackball loves. So let me tell you about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by ProtoArc in their EM01 NL ergonomic trackball mouse. It's been rated as one of the best ergonomic mice you can buy by ZDNet. It's very clear that ProtoArc has ergonomics and comfort at the heart of this mouse's design. I've actually been using a variation of this mouse on the hot new set for quite a while now, and I personally love it so much. Being able to quickly and easily sort through my filming notes with the trackball is super convenient without having to move the mouse around. The trackball itself provides accurate and smooth tracking so you can navigate through your system without even moving your arm. Simply running your thumb over the ball is all it takes, so your arm and wrist can actually rest while you work. The trackball is also adjustable, so you can change the angle from zero to 20 degrees, depending on your hands and your needs, ensuring an always comfortable position. Getting the EM01 set up is also extremely simple. ProtoArc has made this mouse plug and play via both Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless with the ability to control three separate devices at the same time. Additionally, the EM01 is compatible with Windows, Android, and Mac OS, so you can easily connect and swap between devices regardless of operating system. And if you're interested in upping your comfort and productivity, grab yourself a ProtoArc EM01 NL to Day via the link in the video description. Additionally, enjoy 20% off for a limited time when you use our discount code, also found in the description below. As always, thanks to ProtoArc for sponsoring today's video. Well, thankfully, you don't have to worry about your mouse reporting on you, but you might have to worry about your rabbit because <laughs> the AI device that everybody was like, why do we need this? And then we found out that it was just essentially an Android app on an Android device. Uh, it turns out it's an unsecure Android app on an Android device, and it's been found that there's a serious security vulnerability that essentially makes everything you do on your device public knowledge. Your responses, which can contain personalized sensitive information, can be found out by other people. There are security keys that are being found out on the internet, and Rabbit said uh, that this is an alleged data breach, but it turns out that 404 Media found out that this was legit because some researchers who are investigating this alleged data breach were able to send an email specifically from Rabbit's own email domains, from an admin at rabbit.tech. They were able to actually send emails to 404 Media verifying that there's API access here. There is plenty of data that is being hoarded and uh, don't buy this device is my suggestion personally, but if you do have one, um, don't do anything you don't want the world to know about at this point. According to reports, uh, Rabbit has known about this for months and has done nothing to fix it, and so uh, I wouldn't necessarily expect it to get better, but Meta has been trying to make their Meta Quest headset better. There's some news that I don't have an article for, but the Quest 2 is no longer for sale anywhere, and that means that there might be a Quest 3S low-end device that should be coming out on the market sometime soon. But one of the experimental updates they are doing is just giving you the access to Vision Pro features, specifically that you can put Windows wherever you want, not the operating system, but the free-floating 
little programs. This functions very much like it does on the Apple Vision Pro where you're not limited to being able to place them where Meta says in it. It's currently an experimental feature, but you can have tons of windows doing tons of different things. And it definitely seems like ever since the Apple Vision Pro came out, either Meta decided that they needed to compete or they held back all of these cool features until Apple came out with their stuff or uh, they weren't aware that they could do this kind of stuff and now they uh, are just taking inspiration. Kyler did a great video on this about how Apple made the Quest 3 better way back a couple months ago, so you can check that out right up there. It's a neat little competition that's happening despite the fact that the Quest 3 is seriously cheaper. I love the fact that uh, Apple has put fire to the feet of Meta on this, and that was my takeaway from my full review on the Apple Vision Pro. I like what the Vision Pro has, but it got me more excited for what the Quest 4 can be. That's what I'm really looking forward to. And I'm also looking forward to Reese giving you some deals right now. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy whatever today is, guys. And look over here, deals. Starting off today, we have the Thermorite Assassin X120 SE ARGB CPU air cooler available in white for only $17.91, making it $31.99 off. But then next up, we have this Montex Sky 2 ATX mid tower case available for only $74.99 with included promo code, making it $25 off. And then lastly, we have this Asus ROG Strix 750 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply for only $100.97 making it $49.02 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it turns out that Valve made a deal with a gamepad company to release a brand new Steam controller. It's gonna be coming out October 31st, only in Japan at this point, and it's not gonna be made by Valve at all. It's gonna be a brand new horror pad. Hori pad? I'm not sure sure how to say it, and I'm also uh, pretty sure they took their inspiration from a pug, because especially this one right here, that looks like a dog. Ain't that right, Kyler? Pug, pug. That's what the dog would say if it was a Pokemon. That's true. But as you can see, despite the fact that it looks like a canine, it does not have things like the touch pads. Also, it does not have rumble at all. Uh, and so it's gonna launch for roughly $50 in a few different colors, uh, but who knows if it's gonna be coming out in the rest of the world, but at least in Japan, it's the official Steam controller that you could potentially pick up. And when you potentially pick up the 9700X when it launches in about a month, it might be faster than AMD originally told us it was going to be, because one of the key revelations that came out of the Ryzen 9000 announcement at Computex was the fact that the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 chips we're going to be based on a 65 watt TDP, which everybody was like, whoa, if it's gonna be so fast and so power efficient, that's amazing. We love to see it. But then AMD came out and said, hey, the 9700X isn't gonna beat the 7800X 3D, to which people like me were like, huh, that doesn't seem as good. And according at least to WCCF Tech at this point, there's reports going around that AMD might be upping the TDP on the 9700X so that it can beat the 7800X 3D, going from the 65 watt TDP up to 120 watts. Now it's not quite clear what of the rest of the specs would be changed on the 9700X besides the TDP, whether that would increase the boost clocks or potentially make it so that other parts of the chip are more allocated to higher performance, however that would work, but the idea is that it would be able to beat the 7800X 3D at launch, as opposed to being slightly behind it, which is probably gonna be necessary for sales, because I don't see a reason why anybody would pick up a 9700X when the 7800X 3D is on the market, to which people would respond, well, Brett, there's more to uh, CPUs than video games, but also you could pick up like a 7950X for about the same price, especially once these prices drop when the new stuff comes out. I, 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 it, it's just gonna sit in a weird place and I think a lot of people are gonna wait for X3D. So I think AMD does kind of need this. It's obviously a rumor at this point, so take it with a grain of salt, but I would like to see this. I don't have a problem with 120 watt 9700X. I think if I'm buying a Ryzen 7 chip, I do expect it to consume power. And so this would be okay in my book. Let me know what is okay in your book down below in those comments while I look at what you said in the last episode of Hot news over on Floatplane, Gene Rich saying, unrelated, but absolutely love and adore your coffee. Been absolutely hooked since the first brew. Thank you. 
Our coffee is uh, still going in case you uh, need to adjust your caffeine consumption habits. We do have rare brew coffee where our proceeds go to Syngap Research Fund. You can check it out at the link in the video description. I'll try to remember to put it down there. But a big thank you to everybody who subscribes and gets monthly or weekly deliveries as well as people who have checked it out. We've heard very, very good things about the taste and deliciousness of our coffee and we also like where the money's going for it as well. And then over on YouTube, we got Elderman saying, AMD copying the wrong things to now. No one asked for Nvidia's pricings and Intel's naming schemes. It doesn't matter. That's what you get. Turns out that these things are inevitable. Once you start performing well, you just become these companies. You wanna start a GPU company? You're gonna to get to Nvidia's prices at some point. You're gonna start a CPU company? You're gonna start labeling things like they don't make any gosh dang sense? It's just, it's inevitable. Then Silent Observer saying, you got my like by mocking the ridiculous naming scheme of AMD's next gen CPUs. I will continue to do that regardless of whether or not you like it because I do it for me. And then Eggplant saying, I like that Apple may actually be punished for violating the EU laws. Companies violate the laws all the time here in the US and the punishment is laughable. For example, large telecom companies were fined for selling real-time location data or something along the lines and were fined 0.02% of their profit for that year. That's just the cost of doing business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what what's the adage? Fines are just uh, things that make it illegal to not afford it that that sounded rough what kyler has a go what? a fine just makes things illegal for people who are broke is that right i've never heard that saying in my life really yeah huh i mean when you think about it it kind of like if if the punishment is only a fine then it's just a matter of whether or not you're able to afford it if it's just a fine then it's just a fine. <laughs> so as long as you got the cash for it. Then we got Colin Worley saying, I've had Bitdefender detect so many things that Windows Defender hasn't working in IT, Bitdefender all the way. I did a lot of research behind Bitdefender as a sponsor before we allowed them um, here on Hot News. And it seems like when it comes to antivirus and antivirus software, there, there are the legit uh, scams, the ones that you want to stay away from. There's the ones that just seem unnecessary, and then there's the ones who actually perform well. But for the average person, most people would say Windows Defender. Bitdefender seems to be like one of those well-supported ones, as well as Malwarebytes. There's a few others that you should stay away from, but that sentiment of Bitdefender works. It does what it says it's going to do, and it's for the people who don't necessarily want to rely on Microsoft for their antivirus protection. And so that's uh, that's what's happening there. And then we got Sid Liv saying, I loved hearing you read that troll-like name when doing your comment reads, the Chris username. Not saying he's a troll, but more like those fake names you give people, like I Anita Fox. I don't know what you're saying there. Are you talking about the guy? What was his name? Crispy Ballsack? Is that what you're referring to? Because I, I try, I know, I know as I'm reading it what I'm getting myself into. And so I just, I try to, try to have a little fun with it. Good morrow. Hot news.